Hi, this is Mike Tutz. I'm a uh, professor of physics at Columbia University and an experimental particle physicist. I work at the Large Hadron Collider outside of Geneva, Switzerland, where we collide protons with protons at the very highest energies in the world. So I'm here on Ask the Expert to answer uh, your questions. And the first question comes from Derek 2G, who asks, what about neutrinos? In other words, do experiments show that neutrinos travel faster than the speed of light? There were recent results announced uh, towards the end of last year uh, which showed that perhaps neutrinos were indeed traveling faster than the speed of light. That would, of course, be revolutionary since uh, Einstein's special theory of relativity tells us that can't happen. The experiment conceptually is really simple because all you have to do is measure how far something goes and how long it took to get there. You take the distance divided by the time and you get a speed. And that speed ended up being larger than the speed of light by about 60 nanoseconds, so about 60 uh, millionths of a second faster than it should have been. Is that result right? They found some issues about connectors and how, uh, how the measurement was made, which might indicate that, in fact, once they make these corrections, the speed of light will still be safe and it will still be the, the fastest limit that we can go at. There have also been some other experiments that have shown that it seems that neutrinos travel only uh, at or below the speed of light, but not faster than the speed of light. So the next question is from Tarnation Carnation, who asks, what are quarks made of? In some sense, we can't ask the question, what are they made of? They are. They are just these fundamental particles. Now, that may not be the case, because we have to test that experimentally. In the 60s, people did experiments to ask the question, what are protons and neutrons made of? And they bombarded them with electrons. And then they were able to see that, in fact, there was some structure inside the proton. And that structure is what we call now quarks. To the level that we've actually measured them experimentally, they have no structure. They are point-like particles. That said, we continue to do experiments. So for example, at the Large Hadron Collider, we collide protons with protons at the highest energies uh, that have ever been seen in the laboratory before. And that will allow us to, among many other things, try and answer the question, do quarks have some kind of substructure? So as far as we know today, quarks have no structure. And so when you ask, what are they made of? They're just quarks. They have nothing else. The question with the most thumbs up uh, comes from Dewey Peters 96, who asks, if time is variable, how can we say the Big Bang happened 14 billion years ago? Einstein told us, both in special relativity and in general relativity, that uh, time depends on your reference frame. So what might be uh, a time clock ticking for me might be different if you were moving next to me at some high velocity, for example. When we come back together and compare our clocks, we'll see that we have different measurements. So when you say 14 billion years, on whose watch? We have to pick some reference frame in which to measure that time. Imagine, I won't do this in three dimension, but imagine uh, that the universe is just like the surface of a, of a balloon. And on that surface of a balloon, you could put little dots, polka dots on it, which represent, for example, the galaxies. Space itself expands, so it's like blowing up the balloon. And imagine you're standing on one of those dots over there. What do you see? Well, you see all the dots around you moving away from you. If, on the other hand, you were moving a little bit, so imagine you were a bug on this balloon, and that bug was moving, well, if the bug moved towards some of the dots and away from the other ones, he would see something different. It would look to him as if, oh, look, these guys are getting closer and closer to me. The other ones are sort of moving faster and faster away from me. The place where I'm standing because of my motion over there might be a little different. The universe would not be the same when I look on one side and I look on the other side. If you want to set your watch to the correct time for the 14 billion years, what you should do is position yourself in the universe such that it looks isotropic. Namely, it looks the same in every direction that you look. Now you say, well, how do I know when I'm not moving, when it looks the same? Well, one of the ways you can do that is to look at what's called a cosmic microwave background, CMB. That's the remnant of very early universe. And you can look out in the, in the sky and measure this cosmic microwave background. And if it looks the same to you in all directions, then you're standing in the right place. And that's the reference frame in which you would measure the 14 billion years. So thanks for watching. Uh, as always, leave your questions uh, in the comments field below. 
for the next expert to answer your questions. And this is Mike Tutz uh, signing off. <laughs>